What's going on guys? I'm Pete and this is Retro Game Attic. So I snagged this color TV game Block Breaker off of eBay for a pretty decent price. No box as is and no power adapter for about 60 bucks. It's not too bad but now I need to make sure this thing works. It might sound like a challenge to get this thing going on an American TV but let's see what we can do. The console itself sold pretty well and it's an interesting piece of Nintendo history since it was the first time the Nintendo logo was predominantly displayed on video game hardware and the external design was actually one of Shigeru Miyamoto's first Nintendo video game projects after joining the company just a few years prior to its release. So we'll take a quick look at the console itself. It has the various buttons there, the on off switch, toggles for different game modes, and the actual dial itself that you use to control the paddle. So you have a power adapter port and a RF output, which is just hardwired to the console. So you are going to need a coaxial converter in order to hook it up to your TV. Luckily, they're inexpensive and pretty readily available. I snagged a pack of two of them for five bucks off of Amazon, and I'll throw a link to them in the description below. And then we'll flip it over and you can see there are two RF channel settings on the bottom of the console. It's just a toggle switch to go to channel one or channel two. The console itself is pretty light and it looks good. I mean, it has Shigeru's sign of approval, so that's gotta be something right there. Right. Next up, you're going to need a power source. So I try to use an original NES, the model NES002 adapter, to try to keep everything Nintendo-centric, but unfortunately that did not work. So I ended up using a Master System Model 1 power adapter, model number MK3025, and plugged it right into the side of the console. I feel that the Model 1 Master System power adapter lines up pretty well to what would fit into the AC adapter hole, versus the NES one at least. So next step we're going to flip around the TV and locate the coaxial input and you just screw in your coaxial adapter into it, then plug your RCA connection from the console into the adapter, and that's it for hooking up the console, it's pretty simple. So next up we're going to make sure that the TV is set to channel 95. So next you're going to flip the console over and set the RF output channel to 1CH on the toggle switch, and then flip the console over again and flick the on off toggle switch to on. There it is, it works. So we'll test out a few game modes right here. The sound works. The knob is actually surprisingly responsive. Yeah, it gets progressively more challenging. I mean, the thing is just essentially a clone of Atari's Breakout, but it's still pretty cool. I mean, it is a Nintendo product after all. So that's it guys, the console is all hooked up, it's a pretty straightforward process, the console plays well, it looks good, it sounds good, and overall I'm pretty satisfied and I'm stoked to have it in my collection. Thank you guys so much for watching Retro Game Attic, I appreciate each and every one of you, I really do, and stay tuned for more, I have some stuff in the works that hopefully you guys will enjoy because I think it's pretty cool. Alright guys, later.